your conversion that's a gate of heaven the moment you trusted the lord that's a gate of heaven and since that time the lord had mission compassion compassion and love to jacob and since the time of that of that new birth and that salvation see the great uh, compassion the lord has had on you but remember it says that uh, in uh, second corinthians chapter chapter six second corinthians chapter six i'm reading here from verse 17 you see what we need to do and how we become the sons of God and the daughters of God and the children of God. It tells us very clearly here in uh, Second Corinthians chapter 6, and reading from verse 17. It says, Wherefore, come out from among them. It's your repentance. It's your turning away from sin. It's your turning away from evil. Wherefore, come out from among them and be you separate, says the Lord. You don't want to be remain like Esau. That soul is battered, become separate. You don't want to become like Lord, like went to Sodom and Gomorrah. It says that you will separate yourself unto him. Turn away from sin and turn to the Lord and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And when you become sons of God like that, it says, Jacob, have I loved. Jacob, have I loved. That is, because you turn to the Lord, he loves you. He loved you before you responded to that love, and now he continues to love you. Uh, we're looking at uh, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 7. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, here he tells us about this special love about this unique love and the responsibility that comes upon you as a child of God because you love the Lord. Jacob, have I loved, and you have I loved. I'm reading from verse 3 here, neither shall thou make marriages for them, that thy daughters shall thou not give unto a son, and his daughter shall not thou not take to thy son. Now that you are born again, you are special. And he loves you. But that love carries responsibility. He says you will not marry the people of the world. You will not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For they will turn away thy son from following me. That they may serve all the gods. And so will, uh, will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. He's saying that uh, unequal yoke will bring sudden destruction. It will stop the flow of the blessing of God upon your life. It will actually bring his judgment. It says, but, uh, but it says, it does. Shall ye deal with them? Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and turn their graves and burn their, their graving images. A fire. It's just saying that you have nothing to deal with occultism. You have nothing to deal with idolatry. You have nothing to deal with the powers of darkness. Now you are born again. Therefore, you totally reject everything that is of the world, that is of darkness. And for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people a peculiar people, a unique people, a blessed people unto him above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Then it says, the Lord did not set his love upon you and choose you because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people. But because God loved you, he loved you. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. And the Bible has told us the truth. Because the Lord loved you. And because he will keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. As the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage. From the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, is a faithful God. He keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. You see that? He loves you, now you love him. You reciprocate, you see, because he has loved me, and because he has chosen me, and because he delights in me, and because he has given me a salvation. 
I will love him too and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So we have the confirmation of love for Jacob. And that love, I pray, this year, you see the practical demonstration of that in your life in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. If you are part of the church, I don't mean the visible church, I mean the invisible church. If you are part of the church, the ecclesia, they called out people, the people who have come out of the world and they have come to the Lord and you come part of the bride of Christ. He loves you because he loves the church and because he loves the bride. He says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it to the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself. You see the goal of Christ for the church? The purpose of love for the church. And if you're a Christian, you're born again, you're a child of God, you're saved and you're sanctified, see the goal and see the purpose and see the reason why you come into the body of Christ that he might present it to himself. A glorious church, not having sport or equal or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. It will happen in your life. And then we see now the consideration of less love for Esau. Less love for Esau. And that's why it says, and Esau, I hated. I've told you already, it's a word of comparison. When you compare the, the love of a God for uh, Jacob, and you compare that with the love of God for Esau, Esau will be thinking, it's like hatred. It's like he has less love for me. God loves everyone. He loves everyone. But he loves the church more than he loves the world. He loves the people of the world. He gave Jesus Christ for everyone in the world. So that whosoever will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will come into that special love. If you are born again, that's how you came into that special love. If you are not born again, you are seen in the world. He loved you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. That she may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his uh, son to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. There are things he gives to the sinners. There are things he gives to the unjust. But then when it comes to the just and the believers and the children of God, he now gives special blessings unto them. That the people of the world will just look like, oh, he, he has not shown us enough love. There's limited love for them. Like there was limited love for the people of uh, the world and also for Esau. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 12. We're reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12. We're looking at verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Let's relate this with Jacob and Esau. You see, yes, Esau sinned. Yes, Esau took uh, that birthright. Yes, Esau supplanted, sorry, I mean uh, Jacob supplanted Esau. But then he sought forgiveness. He even tried to make restitution. And he said, uh, go and give this to Esau. And uh, she pleaded with him. Esau said, no, I have enough. He was still nursing the hatred. It is sad. But Jacob, Jacob did not nurse any hatred. He said, yes, I did wrong. And because I did wrong, I'm going to repent. He repented. And then you remember the wrestling of Jacob with that personality from heaven. That is with the angel of God. And then he said, let me go. And Jacob said, I will not let you go. He accepted to bless me. He received the blessing. He was saved. He received the blessing. He received the love of God. And so God said, because you have sought my face, I love you. And I'm going to show special love for you. How about Esau? Uh-uh. Esau retained the hatred. Esau retained the animosity. The days of the death of my father is at time. And then I will kill Jacob. And then Jacob ran away. And when he came back, about 20 years later, he said, go give this to my brother. 
And he said, go and tell him, I'm coming with 400 people. I'm going to deal with you. That man did not follow peace with anybody. You saw? That man did not follow holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. That's why it says in verse 15, looking diligently, lest any root of bitterness, lest, uh, lest anyone fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up, uh, says uh, uh, the trouble you and thereby many be defiled in the case of Esau root of bitterness was there that's why he couldn't experience the fullness of the love of God and the fullness of the provision of the Lord it says in verse 16 lest there be a, any fornicator and profane person profane person means uh, you know a defiled person a worthless person a person that doesn't have any any purpose and any position in the sight of god i pray you'll not be like that a person that god will think about and say that man no repentance that man no restitution that man no righteousness that man just a useless worthless man lest anyone be a prophet a profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of bread sold his birthright for ye know how that afterward, when he would have uh, inherited the blessing, he was he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He really couldn't bring himself into repentance and couldn't really seek the face of the Lord and have everything he ought to have. That's why God had limited love for him. And then he was always seeking to hate Jacob, persecute Jacob, revenge on Jacob. Let me show you. In Obadiah, I'm reading chapter 1. It has only one chapter, actually. Obadiah, look at this. In this uh, one chapter, Obadiah, look at verse 6. Obadiah, look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, How are the things of Esau such out? How are his hidden things such out? That is, his hidden uh, hatred, his hidden animosity, his hidden bitterness against his brother Jacob. It says in verse 10, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and, for, and thou shalt be cut off forever. That's the reason why no repentance. That's the reason why only bitterness, only anger, he was manifesting all the time. And Jacob was trying to make the move. Let's settle this thing. Let's forget about this thing. Yes, I did wrong, but I'm giving you all this now. All the 20 years I went away, look, I'm giving you back. They said, don't worry. I have enough, but I'm still going to take the pouch of flesh. I'm still going to take, I'm still going to revenge. That's why God said, Jacob I love and Esau I hate. And then number three now is the commendation of the limitlessness of God. The commendation of the limitlessness of God. How God without limit wants to pour his blessing out. Come to Malachi chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. And it says, your eyes shall see. The goodness of the Lord, your eyes shall see. And the fruit of the gospel, your eyes shall see. And the benefits of the kingdom, your eyes shall see. And the answers to your prayers, your eyes shall see. And, and the joy of serving the Lord this year, your eyes shall see. Our God is unlimited. Our God is limitless. And he will do great things in our lives this year. In Jesus' name, turn to the right, you will see the blessing. Turn to the left, you'll see the blessing. And move forward, you'll see the blessing. All around you are coming from on high. The blessings of God will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Your eyes shall see. And we and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. And I pray that this year will be a year of seeing that blessing upon our lives in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're looking at verse 7. In Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 7, here is what it says. It says, And your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. And you'll continue to see. Then in verse 21, in verse 21, it says that your days may be multiplied. And the days of your children in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. Look at this. As the days 
of heaven upon the earth. The days of heaven upon the earth. Those days are coming. If you believe, you'll see the glory of God. If you accept, you'll see the fulfillment of the promise. In Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. What do you mean from verse 23? Luke chapter 10. And we're looking at verse 23. And see the joy of the Lord. The rejoicing of the Lord. Because of what the Lord was going to do. And what the Lord was doing already for his own people. Luke chapter 10 and verse 23. It tells us. And and, and he said, and he turned, and he turned him unto his disciples, and privately said, Blessed are your eyes which see the things that ye see. And for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. He said that this year, all that your eyes will see of the goodness of God, you'll be so surprised. You see, I didn't know the Christian life is as wonderful as this. Yes, it's more wonderful than you can ever tell. Because of the limitlessness of our God. Verse 19, before we pass on, before we move on, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means make a personal hurt me. We're coming to point number two now. The condemnation of polluted, contemptible sacrifices for God. The controversy that the Lord had with the children of Israel. And uh, the controversy that the Lord has with quite a number of so-called believers. I pray that if God has this controversy with you, you resolve it completely so that this year will open up a new page for you in Jesus' name. Malachi chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 6. His son honoreth his father, and his servant his master. If I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despise thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. You see those two words there? On the one hand, the word polluted. That's verse 7, wherein have we polluted thee? And on the other hand, the word contemptible, polluted and contemptible. It says in verse 8, and if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Uh, or accept thy person, says the Lord of hosts. And look up here, what was happening here, he says, he took the love of God for granted. God lost me, God lost me, this I know. God lost me, and he is a faithful God. He will keep on loving me. Whatever I do, whatever I don't do, he keeps on loving me. And God said, you're misinterpreting this law. You're misconstruing this law. He says, you're misplacing this law. You're taking me for granted. And then the priests were there, and they were offering polluted sacrifice unto the Lord. And the Lord is saying, what is all this? How can you offer something like this?